What's up, everybody? Once upon a time. So I had a pretty interesting dream last night. I just got done telling it to Deb. I realized it didn't make much sense. <laughs> Do dreams really make much sense? I don't know, it's very weird, very strange. It was... I explained it really well to her. I probably won't be able to explain it very well right now, since I just explained it. But I'll try my best here. Uh, so it was, it was me. I was like, like at the front of this group. So me standing as like some sort of leader, or at least at the front. And then this, there's a bunch of people behind me. And in front of me and this group behind me stand another group with a leader in front. And we were all in the darkness and this leader was dressed in white and I had this sense of like, it was like the Pope. So, and for, so, for some reason, I'm just telling you what happened in the dream. Uh, and we, we all knelt and started bowing, um, pro prostrating um, to the Pope. I'm just gonna say the Pope, but not actually the Pope. Just some white, white figure Bear with me here. Don't want to die. Not yet. And I remember laying, reaching my hands down under his robe there to place my hands on his feet. So I placed my hands on his feet and basically, um, I don't know, I was, in, I was in complete reverie. And, um, I don't know, I was just like going along with the dream. And so, after I had knelt down and placed my forehead on the ground, and placed my hands on his feet he he then uh, took this golden chain and put it on my head and so I had uh, like like a like a golden chain on my head and after that it's like I became him and then I remember turning around. Um, so, you know, there was the Pope there and then uh, like a multitude of people behind him, a group all, all dressed in white for as, for as far as the eye could see. And then after he placed the golden chain on my head, I turned around and it was a dark, kind of like a dark alley not completely dark, but dim. And uh, this alley was only like four or five feet wide. And that's where the group of people were behind me, like the narrow path. And I had the gold chain on my head. It was interesting, so interesting. And like I could feel the power. If that makes any sense? This sounds dumb. But like, I felt like I could do anything. And at that point I became lucid and realized, well, I don't know if I became lucid like I realized that I was in a dream, but I realized intuitively that I could do anything. So I had the thought of climbing up the wall like Spider-Man and so I did. 
and I started climbing up the wall, sticking to the wall. And the, the group in the alley um, saw me do this. And so they attempted to do the same and they were also climbing up the wall. And so I got up to the top of the wall and I pressed one arm against one side of the wall and my other arm against the other side of the wall. And then um, I felt like one of those Olympic gymnasts um, doing the cross or whatever. And so like um, I could feel all my muscles strengthen and I became like really strong and I felt really powerful. And I kind of like, uh, I thought of Jesus and the, Jesus on the cross. And, uh, it was powerful. And then, at that point, I, uh, I was sticking with the Spider-Man theme. And so, I ended up shooting out my web slingers to another building and I started swinging around the city and it turned into like New York City and uh, I started swinging and shooting out my web slingers I know I'm repeating myself but it's uh, so I like I was swinging and um, getting faster and faster and the more momentum I got the higher I would swing and it got to the point where I was swinging so fast and I've gained so much momentum that um, that I was basically way high way high up in the air too high man way too high like miles above the earth <laughs> and here I come flying down <coughs> and I'm so afraid to hit the ground that um, I keep shooting out my webs my webs and latching onto the the building before I hit the ground but every time I do that it just keeps launching me higher and higher <laughs> and so it got kind of terrifying at, at, a, at a point in time and uh, eventually eventually I kind of instead of swinging all the way up I kind of swung halfway and then skidded along the ground and then that was the end of that dream sequence. Um, and that was just one part of the dream. Another part of the dream... Uh, oh, my, my ex was in there. Punched her in the face. I had a dream last night too. I wonder if that has anything to do with what happened last night. Hello. So last night in my dream, um, I, had, I had this overwhelming sense of feeling lost and not being able to find my way back. So in in this other dream last night, not not last night, but last last night, there I was I was waiting in this room and I was waiting for my ex. I was waiting for Nicole, is her name. And for hours, for hours, I was waiting for her. Okay, I had I had gone down this I had gone down this chute, this tube, or whatever, and she was supposed to come right after me, but she never came. And I waited for her to come. And 
I waited and waited. And then at a certain point of time, certain point in time, I decided I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm going to go. And as soon as I decided that I was going to go, she shows up. And I was kind of upset. I was like, you're going to show up now? <laughs> and all I, all I ever wanted to do was be with her. Um, but she was off with other people. Uh, it gets difficult to talk about. She cheated on me. Three times. Gave her three chances. I was... I gave too much. I gave too much of myself, so she took me for granted. Stuff like that. I don't know, that's a, that's a whole long story in itself. So, I decided, you know, fuck this, out of spite. And I was gonna leave anyway. Even though, even though she appeared and she acted like no, there was no big deal. But it was a big deal to me because I had to wait. And here I am, you know, trying to give myself too much of myself, I guess. I don't know. And so I got, I, I went with a buddy and he had a school bus that had monster truck tires and we rode off in his school bus monster truck down the street and then I was like you know I just wanted to see I just wanted her to see me leave because I'm not attached to her even though I'm attached I have attachments okay and so okay, I was like okay let, let's turn and go back so he went around the block but how dreams work or you can't you, you can't go back in dreams it seems you can't you can't go back it's only forward and so I remember uh, we turned around the block and uh, the street was cut off and we couldn't get back to the place that I was at and so I spent the rest of the time just feeling lost and not being able to find my way back and uh, it was kind of traumatic. So I don't know. There's, there's my dreams. Thought I'd try to make another video again. Just try to get my thoughts out. It helps me to make these videos so I can process um, whatever's stewing around in my head. So I do my best, just kind of sort things out. Um, that's all I really have left to do here is kind of process all the trauma that I've experienced in my life. So if I can process all that trauma out, then I'll be a happier guy. I try not to think so much, but so hard not to think. <laughs> this is me not thinking. This is me thinking that I'm not thinking. So you're never, I don't know if you're never not, never not thinking. Where, what are thoughts? Where do they come from? constantly going, moving forward. You're constantly moving forward and there's no going back. But I have a lot of attachments, so... Wish me luck in trying to let those go. Subscribe if you wish. Subscribing is optional. Loving yourself is not.